If you believe in putting love over fear to discover the possibilities of connection which lay outside of your comfort zone, you are in good company. Not just with me, but with Yes Theory, an amazing group of content creators and also what I would be, I would consider to be a leader of a movement to inspire other future leaders of our time. So I had the privilege of attending their cohort on storytelling through Creator Now. And I am so excited to be able to share with you my experience. Now, fortunately I have creativity to leave it, fill in the blanks where my note taking leaves off. So the intention of this exercise is not to give a cheat sheet of, of the course because you can always go to the Creator Now platform to watch the classes or you can and you can follow Yes Theory um, who puts out regular content and has a very active community around the world. What my intention is, is to share with you my raw, undigested self-assessment of my experience on this final day of my Project 30 challenge. In the cohort, the Yes Theory Boot Camp, we had the opportunity to participate in a Project 30 challenge, which is to make a video a day for 30 days. I said yes, and I'm on day 30. So. What I intend to do is to touch on some of the ingredients um, that we went over in the course and um, then share some things that I've assessed in my work over these last 30 days to see what resonates with me where my natural aptitudes lie and just require a little bit of experience and the things that I really am struggling with. And um, the reason why I think this is useful for you is because if I saw somebody doing a raw candid self-assessment of themselves with an amazing curriculum, I would be completely intrigued. So I hope that you will too. Oh, I should also mention um, a little bit of, about my background, um, which will come out in some of these clips of the last 30 days. Um, I was in a position currently, recently of some very difficult times. In my entire life, I have been a convicted creator, completely resolute in my creative journey, and um, I struggled a lot with connectivity with people because it felt like people of the world just were not grasping my creative concept and um, that that alienation that sense of of just the internal conflict of feeling like so passionate and so hopeful for humanity and just being like just not received um, kind of festered into literal cancer and um, fortunately I had going into my last procedure I had had so many complications that you know I live for my children and um, but I was feeling like you know I just know that this you know this is this is not gonna go right if there's not something more if there's not a hope of being able to connect with people of the world who think like me and her who are striving to do things like me so that I can do better for my children that is not a good mental space to go into a surgery and so I invested in the course as that extra that extra beacon of hope that actually something more will will come out of this long course that I've, I've stayed true for all of these years before technology even supported the capacity to do the things that they are all that yes there is already doing and that I'm trying to achieve and um, so that's why this is this class is really 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 special to me to be able to to see people actually demonstrating that my values are can be respected by normal society and um, 
so shifting hearts and minds and I'm in such alignment with that and so that's okay so that's part of the backstory what else do I need to add into blah, 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 blah. oh so the framework going into the project 30 challenge especially having all of these medical concerns and just being in a transition point in my life and not really knowing <laughs> what i was getting myself into i and i don't have the equipment to just drop footage into a timeline and just really you know do rough cuts and just simple bum 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 to be able to expedite my learning curve faster so i thought well at least there has to be some overarching just theme you know like the, the project 30 uh, that yes theory um, is really well known for getting their start from which they set out to to try something new every day okay well for me to take that same the spirit of that concept um, and apply it to something uh, relevant in my current s situation um, I use the metaphor of cleaning out my creative closet and um, every day kind of taking a little bit and piece of part of my creative journey part of my family plight part of my just you know musings on the world and the direction of life and how they've accumulated in there and so I tried to weave a little bit of that in each episode while trying out various of these different ingredients um, and so today I would like to try <laughs> to tie together the actual literal closet cleaning with the symbolic um, <laughs> purge because in the course of, of doing all this work for all these days burning the candle at both ends um, the closet itself has not gotten, you know, actually really that much better. I feel a lot better in the, the closet in my mind and the direction that I'm going to go with these things once I'm able to, to process them. But, um, so I wanted to somehow weave that in. I also, um, just want again to say how excited I am for this opportunity to be able to just share just a little you know rough brainstorm of some of these bullet points that are a lifetime of insight to digest so vamanos andiamo let's go before even venturing into the higher level content of the cohort, it was evident to me that my packaging left everything to be desired. With regard to an introduction to taste, I felt confident in my clarity that taste is ultimately a matter of personal preference. I was reassured by affirmations of following one's love, for it is all that I know to do. I found encouragement to venture outside the creative comfort zone as a little paradoxical to me considering that is where I live. It made me consider eventually incorporating more of aesthetics into my expressive works. I feel fortunate to have befriended serendipity long ago for it is how I create many of my works and how I am currently learning to edit. With so much negativity in the world and sometimes the need to just tune it out, conscientious consumption is something that I need to work on. The most profound part of the lesson in taste for me is bridging that gap between what you envision and what you care to create and actually obtaining the skills to reach those with whom you're meant to connect. Because brainstorming is one of my creative comfort zones, it was inspiring to hear additional insights. The encouragement to stay open to the seeds of inspiration in every little thing means so much to me. I like the analogy of polishing your antenna, keeping your receptors open to channel positive energy and eliminate static. I was familiar with practice and discipline as developing muscle memory, but never thought to apply it to creativity, thinking of creativity as a muscle which strengthens over time. This has been one of the greatest gifts of Project 30. As a creative with a busy family, caring to eventually be more mobile, protecting your physical and energetic space is a skill to be evolved over time. I was excited by encouragement to switch things up and I actively experimented. 
I felt reassured by the ingredient of keeping a beginner's mind because at this point, that's what I have to work with. Advice to get rid of low-hanging fruit is sometimes easier said than done, but with practice, I aim to become more selective. A big favorite of many of us overthinkers is that done is better than perfect, which was another amazing benefit of enduring the Project 30 challenge. The ingredient of mastering the mind map was particularly interesting to me because it is essentially what I had been doing in various incantations. Mind mapping is such a monumental creative aid and it was a great pleasure to have it broken down for us. I found lessons on selecting ideas particularly fascinating in that they require a balance of brainstorming and mind mapping while still inviting serendipity. Being realistic with myself that I'm still in that experimental phase while looking forward to being more selective with ideas. While the ingredient of thinking like my harshest critic may come somewhat naturally for me, it calls attention to yet another gap between my personal taste and that of my prospective audience. I was encouraged that in all of my obvious skill deficits, in addition to following my passion, I am at least attempting not to compromise my soul. A major obstacle course I will need to address is the element surrounding sharing stories about adventures in a way that is also engaging for viewers. One of the pinnacle challenges that I will need to overcome is hiding the vegetables. I feel like instead of coding nutrition and entertainment, I'm sitting here with a beaten garlic smoothie stand that's valuable, but nobody wants to go near. When it came to the introduction of storytelling, I was elated to find that I was cognizant of the necessity of a deeper why. Now I just need to learn how to implement it. Finding the humanity and character development should be accessible to me with enough practice. It so aligns with my mission for a harmonious humanity. Embracing the power of silence is something that intellectually I can imagine. Again, it's just a matter of practice. Identifying conflict to build intrigue and work toward resolution is another ingredient I will need to practice. I love the idea of finding and sharing a truth in storytelling. I truly believe in the beauty of diversity and that we are often more common than we think. And to be able to convey that greater commonality is something to aspire to. Another ingredient that I was thrilled to have going for me was breaking the rules because in my plight to learn content creation, I've broken probably every rule of best practices, all in the spirit of growth through experimentation. Now moving on into more advanced storytelling, I was excited by insight into the nuance of various ingredients which will probably require a lot of experimentation and practice to master. It will take some time for me to learn to evoke the appropriate emotion given the circumstances, and I look forward to the implementation of musical emotional arcs to elicit those intended emotions. I was so inspired to learn from the master's yes theory of how to respect the audience's intelligence by guiding them toward the emotion and allowing them to arrive there, making it a lot more meaningful. I cannot wait to arrive at the point where I can reinforce the hope and opportunity by interjecting elements of surprise. The knowledgeable and inclusive hearted instruction was so inspiring and encouraging. I cannot wait to implement these ingredients of storytelling. It was fascinating to see how these ingredients of storytelling were echoed back in the ingredients of editing. I feel called to the art of editing as an expansion of my creative palette. However, the first ingredient of finding the story through the rough cut is where the evidence of my skill gap becomes profound. I may have some good instincts on style and pacing, but again, the gap. I was so excited to get the perspective of the instructors on perspective because it is so dynamic and multifaceted from that of the intention of the creator to the audience to the environment. And I had a lot of fun playing with different angles and different concepts throughout the cohort. It was so interesting to learn about and to practice how the editing must reflect 
the heart of the story, serendipity, and also the intuition of the art of editing to palatably convey the story's ultimate gem. Intellectually, it is clear the value of the intro and the outro, the setup and the conclusion. However, realistically, it remains on a long list of skills I am working simultaneously to acquire. I was also very excited to hear about, and I feel drawn to, the magic that can occur when taking creative liberty in the edit. I was highly intrigued by and am eager to explore the editing ingredient of not settling, the editing proficiency to do the story justice and know when to quit. Throughout the experience, I've been in utter awe of how each segment reflects back upon mirrors and builds on the previous. When it came to brand building and community, the ingredient of focusing on impact went back to the storytelling ingredient of why and the gem of the story in the editing, with the emphasis on how to push forward and network real-world engagement on the ideas and the stories delivered through the content. I felt empowered by the idea of not focusing on the numbers of the audience, but on the strength of the community that we're building. The branding and community ingredient of deflecting the spotlight onto the audience and others stood out to me because at the moment I am experimenting on myself as a subject in order to gain the skills to learn how to adequately reflect and represent the light of others. Throughout the cohort, we had many additional amazing sessions and experiences, but I'd like to end on the ingredients of mindset. Better mind, heart, and soul set. I was so moved and empowered by the ingredients. I believe that the essence, the ember is there, maybe even the spark in my work. And I'm just so thrilled by the opportunity of all of these ingredients and all of this guidance and all of the support to be able to pull it out, to reflect it into the world, to touch the right people. Hearing the ingredient of following your compass, not just your map, was so empowering to me because I felt like I've spent most of my life holding out to my compass, my true north, and other people doubting me. Dreaming big and starting small, that is another one. I'm starting small by doing my little lesson plans and making my little videos, but with a vision, a larger intention in mind. Another mindset ingredient of being your own best friend. It really touched me because what my very first vlog long form video that I, I believe it was, I was dancing around making fun of how I'm my own best friend until I can reach out and make those intended connections. Additionally, surrounding yourself with people who reflect your light, that just just peered into my soul because I feel like it's just such a challenge in this world sometimes to just stand for something and just feel such resistance and the people who get it who who have that similarity of thinking they're just inaccessible live life now is another theme that will probably reoccur throughout my work considering my life and death experiences and just the threads of the adventures and creative coping and then ultimately setting your dreams free that to me was just an amazing affirmation i've spent my entire life clinging to my dreams fearful that somebody's going to try to take it away and in essence i was smothering it but to put it out into the world so that somebody can receive your call, your connection, your magnetism, that, that, that solar charge, the literal channeling. So to hear the mindset session 
again tethered in with all of the ingredients of storytelling and video making and community building just gives me such hope for community and participating in something greater to eventually shine and transmit the light and the love that it can be received and amplified so thank you thank you thank you do i need to say thank you a thousand times a million times thank you 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 all day and night <laughs> thank you to all thank you to all thank you to all